Praise God. How in the world are you today? Well, this is Monday morning. You know what they say about Monday. Monday, fun day. Monday is the time when everybody is so busy at work. Well, before I go to work here, I just want to share a word with you. In the book of uh, 1 Corinthians 2, the one that you're looking at right now. Amen. Well, I just want you to consider this. Every day you wake up is an opportunity that God has given you so that you can become holy and perfect and righteous the way he wants you to become. Not with your own strength, but by the grace of God and because Christ is in you. That's if you have the spirit of Christ in you. Remember, God gave us his spirit to do what? To make you become holy. That's why he is called the Holy Spirit. Okay? In our days, people have mistaken the Holy Spirit. They think it's just for dancing and screaming. No, 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 no. The Holy Spirit is inside of you to make you become holy, to convict you of sin, to bring you to the Lord Jesus Christ when he's coming back so he can find you unspotted, without blemish. Do you understand? So in other words, every day you have to work on your attitude. If you have anger issues, if you have like impulse anger like every for every little thing you get pissed off you get mad if you have no patience you know you you just can't wait you want everything now you know especially we live in the last days where people have microwave you know patience they, they can't wait they just want everything now 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 they want everything like speed dial you know before when you had the old phone you had to turn the button and wait for the number to come back for you to do the second number but now in 2020, you live in speed dial moment. So everybody wants everything fast, fast, fast. And then, you know, God, when, he, when he's doing something, he always starts with a seed. When he said that the Messiah was coming, the Messiah started with a seed. When he said Moses was going to deliver his people of Israel, he came with a seed. So if you have no patience, you can't serve God. If you have no faith, you won't be able to serve God because he wants you to wait. And you have seen it throughout the whole Bible where Abraham had to wait. Moses had to wait. All his people had to wait. So God is working in your life, but you need to see progress. Are you changing? Are you becoming new every day? If you used to curse, do you still curse? If you, if you used to drink, do you still drink? If you used to uh, smoke, do you still smoke? You see, the, the, um, the process takes time. Gradually, you are changing. But look at your life to see if you're making any progress or you're going backwards. That's how you know. Because the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Are you becoming new according to the word of God or are you going backwards? I right? don't just go to church and say that um, you grew up in a Christian family. You know, my daddy is a pastor. My mom, you know, uh, uh, is a Christian. Uh, just because you hang around friends that are Christian doesn't mean that you are a Christian. Now, how can you tell if somebody belongs to God, if God is in them or they are in God? Okay. But to be a Christian is not only when you say, oh, I believe, oh, I'm saved. Oh, I go to church. It's deeper than that. That's why you need the word of God. That's why God gave us his instructions. Well, some people call it uh, the acronym name for Bible is basic life instruction before leaving earth so it's your instruction it's your gps how to live or you can look at the bible as a mirror 
When you're reading it, you're not only reading the Bible to preach to people, but you're reading it for yourself to detect yourself, to inspect yourself, to check yourself, to examine yourself, to see what's wrong with your attitude, what's wrong with your language, what's wrong with your heart. Some people have jealousy in their heart. Some people have covetousness in their heart. Some people have lasciviousness in their heart. Some people have lust in their heart. Some people have double-minded. So the Bible is there to instruct you, to correct you, to direct you to the right path. But when you're reading it, you can't just read it. You have to obey it. That's how you're going to uh, become a new person. That's how you're going to change. It's not just a book. You just read, oh, I read my Bible. I mean, you ever heard people say that? Oh, I read my Bible. But what you have read, have you implemented in your life? Have you applied in your life? Are you a doer of God's words or are you just a hearer? Anyway, before I go into a trend, let's go to this word that you are looking at right now. What does it say? It says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. See, when you become a man of God or a, or a daughter of God, per se, you have something. God give you something to let you know that you belong to him. It's not just, oh, I believe he gave you something. What it says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. So you have received something. God gave you his spirit. That's how you know that you belong to God. All right. God have given you his spirit. That's the difference between the other religion. The Muslim have not received the spirit of God. How do you receive the spirit of God? God only will live in you in his, with his spirit. That's only when you receive as your savior, as your personal savior, his son, Jesus Christ. Then you will receive his spirit. But if you reject his son, you will not have the son or the father. That's biblical. Okay? So now, look at the difference here. It says, now we have received not the spirit of the world. So the world has his spirit. But the spirit of God also is another spirit that people would have. Either you have the spirit of God or you have the spirit of the world. Very important. Because just because somebody is religious, so just because somebody go to the mosque or somebody become a Hindu, some, somebody become a, a Mormon or any other type of religion out there, Scientology, uh, uh, Confucius, uh, Lutherans, Whatever religion that are out there, just because they are religious doesn't mean that they are, they, they belong to God. If the person doesn't have the spirit of God, they don't belong to God. Just because you're looking at the Pope and then he's quoting scriptures and dressing with big robes, having a crown on his head or his big hats, that doesn't mean that he has the spirit of God in him. How do you know when somebody has the spirit of God and when they don't? That's a good question, isn't it? So now it says that that we might know the things that are freely given to us. Verse 13 says what? Which things also we speak, not in the words which men's wisdom teach it, but which the Holy Ghost teach, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So now... When you have the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God will teach you the Scriptures. See, Paul here is saying that it is the Spirit that will teach you the Word of God. That means that you don't really need a man to teach you. If you have a man of God, praise God. But if there's no man of God to teach you the Word of God, how are you going to know about the Word of God? The, the Spirit of God will teach you the Word. While are you reading it? The Spirit of God will give you revelations. The Spirit of God will enlighten you and make you see things that other people don't see in the scriptures so that you can follow God the right way. Isn't that great? So which things also we speak not in the words of men's wisdom. So in other words, somebody can go to theology school. They can go to Bible school. That don't mean anything. 
They can learn the history of religion, the history of Jesus Christ who came on earth, but the, the Holy Spirit that is in you will teach you the right thing not to do and the things to do. That's your guide. That's why Jesus Christ says, do not leave until I send you the comforter. The comforter is the Holy Spirit. He will seal you until the, the day of Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus made it very exclusive that the other religion are out of the picture because they don't have the Holy Spirit. How will God recognize them if they don't have the Holy Spirit? If they don't have the Holy Spirit, guess what? They don't have the fruit of the Spirit. You will know people if they have the Spirit of God in them when they have the fruit. The evidence is the fruit because they have a different seed. The seed is God's Spirit. It's God's words in them that will grow, that will take root in their heart and that seed will grow. They will bring what? The fruit of the Spirit. If you look at Galatians 5, 22, it'll tell you about the fruit of the Spirit. If you want to look at it, let's take a quick look. Just to show you what evidence the person will show when they have the Spirit of God in them. Uh, here it is. So this is how you will know them. Jesus says in Matthew 7, uh, 14 to 22, he said, by their, you will know them by their fruits. You will know them by their fruits. So the fruit is... The uh, uh, um, is the production of the from the seed that is in their heart, so they will produce good fruits because they have the Holy Spirit in them. But if they have the spirit of the world, this is what they will produce right above that. See, envying, murder, drunkenness, reviling, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation. Emulation is that like competition, uh, witchcraft, sedition, heresies. So this is the fruit of the flesh. See the works of the flesh. So adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. But the fruit of the spirit is what? There you go. Love. That's why God gave the greatest commandment is what? To love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And the second is like unto the first. What? To love your neighbor as yourself. So love... That's how you know when somebody passed from, um, from death unto life is when they love their brothers. If they don't love, they have hate in their heart. They don't belong to God. They don't have the spirit of God in them. You understand? I'm not saying that you can't get hurt. You can't get mad. But the Bible says, be angry and sin not. So they will have love. They will have joy. They will have peace. Jesus said, I'll give you my peace. But in this world, you will have tribulations. Long suffering, you know, they wait on people. They give, they have patience uh, for people to be saved. They have long suffering. They gentle. They they not rough. You know, they have gentleness because they have the spirit of God. They become like sheep. You see, the difference between a sheep and a wolf is, is that the wolf is very conniving. They appear, they have a false appearance, but inwardly, they are, like the Bible said, they are raven of wolves. They are after blood, the blood thirsty, but the sheep is gentle. See, goodness, faith, uh, meekness. That's why the Bible says for a woman to have a meek and quiet spirit. If you see any woman that's trying to take authority over men, that's trying to urge up authority over men, yelling at their husband, and they rough, they tough, that woman doesn't have the spirit of God. They have the spirit of the world. Spirit of Jezebel. So you need the spirit of meekness and quietness, gentle, like a virtuous woman. That's why the Bible always uh, prays um, Sarah for calling Abraham Lord. And temperance. They're not ready to, to rage and fight and anger and always getting ready to scream, always trying to start an argument. You know, against such there is no law. So if you have love, you got the spirit of God inside of you. You, you, there's no law against you because you're already following everything because you love God and you will not break his law and you love people and the people you sin against people more than you sin against God. That's why God gave us more laws, you know, how to treat your neighbor and your, your family and people around you than for him. If you look at the Ten Commandments, it has four laws for God, but this, the six, the rest of the six is for men, mankind. 
because he knows that people that you you can see will hurt you and you need to forgive them you understand so that's how you will know the difference when somebody has the spirit of the world and the spirit of god the spirit of the world they like to show off uh you know they envy they they have murder in their heart they they selfish they have pleasures of themselves and not of God. And you can tell that when you go to a church too. They're always talking about their degrees. They're talking about their books and tapes, but they don't talk about Jesus Christ. Amen? Anyway, I'm going to stop that. I have to go back to work. May God bless you guys. May God keep you. Have a blessed Monday. I pray that you uh, you have a great day at work today. May God keep you. May God bless you. Until next time, to the next video. Hey! Don't forget to subscribe and share this. God bless.